What's up out there? Welcome back to some more Melver Idol, and today we're going to take a look at the God Dungeons. Now, I know this video is fairly long overdue, like the this is early game, but there are still new people coming to the game that may not have any idea how these God Dungeons work or what to expect. So that's what this video is for. And if you've played the game a lot, this probably won't work for you or won't matter to you anymore. But if you have uh, any comments to fill in, throw them down below, help the new people out, help them learn how all this works. So first and foremost, as you progress through the game, you're going to start off whenever you start into combat, doesn't matter if it's the very beginning or not, or if you go work on non-combat stuff first, you're going to browse through the different combat areas here, and you'll end up going through some of the slayer areas here, and then you'll probably start working on some of the dungeons. You will not have access to anything after the volcanic cave until you beat the volcanic cave the first time. Now, just to give you an idea of how things work going forward, once you beat the volcanic cave, it unlocks the air god dungeon. And you have the chance to go in here, but you have to beat the air god dungeon once before you get to the water god dungeon. And then once you've beat the water god dungeon once, it unlocks the earth god, beat the earth god once, it unlocks the fire god. So that's kind of the course of how all this goes. To get to the infernal stronghold, you have to beat the volcanic cave 99 times. That unlocks this. And then you can go in here and start getting items out of it. I would strongly recommend that for doing the God dungeons, you're going to want to grind out the hall of wizards for the magic gear. This, and you're, what you're looking for specifically is the ancient gear here, the ancient set for the magic side. And then you're going to want to grind out the dragon's den. And specifically what you're looking for is to get all the ancient dragon hide out of here. But you need enough of this stuff that you need enough of the, you need all of the items plus enough dra uh, elder dragon hide uh, to upgrade them all. So it takes like two or 3,000. I can't remember how much dragon hide it takes, but you're going to have to idle this place for quite a while. I would strongly recommend getting all of this out and upgrading it and getting the ancient crossbow. Uh, that does That goes a long way towards beating the rest of the game, the rest of the base game, I should say. So you want to do that. And then also with the volcanic cave, um, you want to grind this thing out for the ancient stuff down here, the ancient helmet, plate legs, plate body, and shield. Now these are upgraded with silver and gold, just like your other, uh, smithed up gear is the difference is the ancient shield also has another upgrade beyond that with dragon bones. So you can upgrade that to the dragon fire shield and it's a little bit more damage reduction. You know, it's more better. So I would strongly recommend that if you're going through your journey, that you go through the Hall of Wizards, the Dragon's Den, and the Volcanic Cave, and get all of the ancient gear that you can out of it. And that's what I'm going to base my builds on for this video, for these dungeons, is to start there. What we're looking at in this video specifically is going to be the first clear. So I'm not worried about idling things yet. I'm just worried about getting through the dungeons the first time and living through it, especially if you're hardcore because you don't want to die there because then you lose your character. But you want to live through these dungeons. There is a reason to go through and blast through these as fast as possible. And that's because there are non-combat, this master of nature, uh, well, the fishing doesn't have one, art of control, and that's still art of control. But there's uh, perpetual haste. There's one non-combat skill boost after each one of these dungeons that becomes available in the shop. So if you beat those, you get a speed boost to all of your, well, a lot of your skills, not all of them, but a lot of the skills. You also get really good gear out of here. And then once you've unlocked all of these, you get access to into the mist and you also gain access to dark waters. Now, I don't remember if you have to do all that before you get to the unhallowed wasteland, but the unhallowed wasteland is pretty tough and you probably want all the God gear to approach this. It's a really tough area. So basically what you want to do is run through uh, and collect all the gear out of the hollow wizards, dragons, den and volcanic cave, get yourself geared up. If you do this is you're going to definitely probably need uh, at least 99 clears of this thing. I would then look at trying to get clears out of the infernal stronghold so that you can get enough infernal cores to upgrade the claws and get a few of these infernal capes. So the infernal cape is the best damage reduction cape you're going to get pretty much in the game unless you go to completion. So once you get this cape, you're set for the rest of the game as far as a cape goes. And then you're ready to start going into the god dungeons. Now, 
How do you approach the God dungeons? The very first time I would go into these dungeons with all, equip all the gear that we're going to show here in a second, and then follow the combat triangle. If you follow the combat triangle, you're always going to be strong against whatever you're fighting. And when would you start going into this? So I would probably not try to get into these any less than 60, like, 60's pushing it. 60's really tough. I I think you need level 70 to do to even equip the um I think you need level 70 to even equip the ancient gear, which do I have any of it left? Yes, I do. I believe this is level 70 to even equip. I did not select an item, did I? Come back here. So these are level 70. So you need to be at least level 70. I would recommend that you don't even try these dungeons here until you're 85 specifically because all of the God gear in these dungeons, you can equip at level 85. So if you're not level 85 and you clear this, that's great, but you can't equip any of the gear out of it until you hit level 85. So if you're at level 70 and you're trying this and you, you know, run this a few times and you've got some gear sitting there, you can't equip it until you raise 15 levels. So I would recommend just trying to get to level 85 first, grind out all these other places, get to level 85, and then start working on this. Now, what level 85 do you need? For melee, you need defense. Defense needs to be level 85. For ranged and magic, just ranged and magic needs to be level 85. There are some weapons that come out of here, like you can get the Eris God Sword. There's a melee sword in each one of these. It's two-handed. I wouldn't recommend it. I would just stick with the ancient claws and a shield because you don't get damage reduction from any of these except for the one from the Earth God dungeon. But it's not that great compared to what you get with the shield, and it's just not worth the effort, in my opinion. Now, there is an ultimate god sword that once you get 10 of each of these, you can combine it and make one big massive sword. That's a great sword, but you're going to be having to idle all of these for hundreds, if not thousands of times to get all of that gear. So... Um, we're kind of getting down the road, but anyway, what are we doing here? You're going to grind all this out. You're going to go into these dungeons and you're going to start clearing them. So if you go through and clear these all one time each, you're going to get the non-combat skill boost. You're all, I think you get a storybook at one of these or somewhere in there. Uh, you're going to get some good gear along the way. I would not bother with storm snap. That's not a great, it's a good bow, but it's a two handed bow. It's just not. You're going to get a crossbow. Just use a crossbow. Cloudburst staff, same thing. It's not that great. Uh, Earth layered shield that you get out of the Terran dungeon is great. This You definitely want to get at least one of these, if not two or three, to put one on each combat style. And then on the Fire God dungeon, so basically the Air God gears up your range. The Water God gears up your ma uh, magic. Earth God gears up your melee. So that's all three combat styles. The Fire God dungeon, the stuff on this has one less damage reduction on each of the pieces, but it has better combat stats for speeding your attack up. So you do more damage, you hit faster, but you take more damage. So it's not necessarily going to be used a lot, but if you're trying to grind out some stuff, low level stuff, you can just mow through it with this thing. Uh, all of these dungeons have the chance of giving you bank slot tokens, which is also great for hardcore characters. You know, especially once you hit your bank slot limit, you just get them here. Big old Ron, it's big axe. It's not that great. I don't, I've tried using it. Everything else is better. So a lot of the weapons in here are just not that good. Uh, what you're really going here for is the armor. So let's take a look at what you get for that armor. Now, well, let me back up. This is going to be the builds you would approach the dungeons with for best in slot gear. And with Township, we now have all these hinder scrolls. There's one for melee, ranged, and magic. Um, at, like I said, if you go through and clear the Infernal Stronghold a few times, you'll have enough Infernal Capes for everybody. Uh, elite, amulet, elite Amulet of Defense on each of the styles is not a bad thing. Uh, this gives you 2% damage reduction. Fury of the Elemental Zodiacs, if you go through and get that grind out, you'll have that, especially if you grind multiples out or go through the township tasks that lets you get a bunch of them out. Uh, again, this is a lot of grind to get here, but it just positions you for the best possible place of going through the god dungeons. Uh, and then, you know, here's your ancient helmet, ancient plate body, and ancient plate legs. 
And then the dragon fire shield that is the fully upgraded version of the ancient shield. This all comes from the uh, volcanic cave. The infernal claw, you're going to go into this slayer area here, go into the highlands, get the griffins and pegasus ground out. Each one gives you, you need a hundred of each of these fragments for the dragon claw and ancient claw. And then once you get enough of those, you can go into the infernal stronghold, get 10 of those cores, upgrade, combine the two claws with the infernal cores to get this. So again, this is best in slot. Now there is no ring that you can get that's better. There is, we'll get there, but as far as base game goes, if you don't have the Throne of the Herald expansion, as far as base game goes, the Silver Diamond Ring gives you 1% damage reduction, which is better than you know anything else you get. There is nothing else that gives damage reduction at this level. Uh, for boots, I would go to Dragon Boots. There is no Ancient Boots, so I would just go get the Dragon Boots, get them fully upgraded. That comes from smithing. And for gloves... None of the melee gloves offer any damage reduction. I have no idea why they don't, but they don't. So the best thing you can do is either the Paladin gloves with 4% damage reduction or go get the Ancient Dragonhide Van Braces and make sure your uh, ranged character is high enough level to equip them, and then you can put them on here. You can also swip, sw uh, swap them around if you need to. Like if you have one set, you can put it on here, and then as the combat changes, you can move it around if you need to. But... Um, I prefer to try to get one of each or one for each. So that's the, this is the best setup you can get for the melee side. Now, if you don't have your township far enough to get hinder scrolls, whetstones work, but they're not as good. They don't have as much accuracy as this does. So the melee hinder scrolls are definitely better. As far as a potion goes, I would definitely recommend getting up to damage reduction tier fours. Uh, once you're idling the dungeon, you can look at any other thing you need. If you, if you don't need the damage reduction, you can use any other potion you need, but if you need the damage reduction, make sure you're using tier fours, tier threes are good. And, you know, any tier of it's going to give you some damage reduction, but 10% on tier four is the best. And we're talking about best in slot here. So that's what I would be running. Uh, you could run other stuff like the Reaper potion or something, or I, I don't know, whatever else you can get access to. Um, melee strength, melee evasion, melee accuracy, you know, whatever. You've got some options here for ranged. You could use the ranged assistance or magic assistance for magic, stuff like that. Regen potion. Regen potion does not work in uh, hardcore. It works in standard and adventure. But damage reduction fours, unless you don't need them, and then you can switch off to something else. Uh, for tablets, you can really use any kind of tablet. In the melee build that I've got here, it's Minotaur and Yak. That gives you a little bit better damage reduction against a ranged enemy. Uh, you could do that with the uh, Witch and Yak or Centaur and Yak and get the same thing. You're basically using this to get... You're following the combat triangle to use the Yak tablet to get a little bit of extra damage reduction versus the thing that's you're weak against. So, or strong against, I should say. So melee is strong against ranged, and this gives you an extra two percent for that range. So it makes you even stronger. And then there's one for magic and one for range that works the same way. For prayers on the melee side, this one's hard to say because you could be anywhere in this list. And if you've worked and ground out this all the way down to the bottom, you can use Battleborn if you want with Valor or something like that. Uh, Holy Aegis is great for damage reduction if you have that. Uh, one of the ones that I would recommend for any of the combat styles, no matter what you're going up against. So if you're on a melee side, you'd be fighting ranged. I would do protect ranged. That means this reduces the amount of times that the enemy hits you. So it gets only a 20% chance to hit you. Um, if the creature is already under 20%, you don't want to equip this because it will raise it to 20%. It's kind of a weird logic, but um, if it has like a 70 or 80% chance to hit it, if you use this prayer, it drops down to a 20%. So it's not hitting you as often. So I would definitely recommend one of the protect spells. And then the other side of it, depending on what combat style you're on, is an accuracy one. So like Mystic Might gives you accuracy. Like if you were leveled up somewhere in this uh, vicinity right here, I would do Mystic Might for uh, magic, Eagle Eye for ranged, 
and incredible reflexes for melee. But again, once you get down in here to like chivalry and piety, stone skin, uh, augury, stuff like this, rigor, if you, the further down you are, the better the uh, prayers are. So you would definitely use the, the best ones you could get. I would work to prayer up to at least the protect ones, uh, maybe just a little bit beyond a mystic might and eagle eye, but that's kind of the prayers that I would use. So then we, we've taken a look at the melee build here. Let's take a look at the magic build once again. Oh, and I guess I better point out, this is a passive slot. You do not get this unlocked until you've beaten into the mist. So again, you would want to burn through the, the God dungeons very quickly, maybe get a few pieces of gear out of it and try to get through into the mist sort of quickly because that unlocks the passive slot, which is used in all the other skills. There's a lot of things you can equip up here that make life a lot easier. But anyway, in the magic side on this build here, I've got the witch and dragon synergy and you can use like uh, centaur minotaur uh, dragon. It basically adds fire damage to your build. So it burns them down a little bit. I like putting it on magic cause there is some things that do catch them on fire anyway. But again, it's the ancient, ancient gear here in this one. I'm using the elite amulet of magic. This has a 2% damage reduction on it. So I don't have to worry about losing it. And the difference between this amulet and this amulet of defense, the defense amulet gives melee bo boost for defense. This one gives magic boost. So, and a little magic damage. So this is more for magic and it's, that's why you want to equip it. And then I have a spare dragon fire shield, but whatever the best shield you have to equip. And then one of the imbued wands, I'm using the fire imbued wands, the fire imbued wand, because it's the best wand that I have. And at, that is the best wand you're going to get until later. And then the skull cape, this comes from Slayer. Uh, you got to get like 400,000 Slayer coin to buy this. So it's a little expensive. You got to grind it out, but 3% damage reduction. The infernal shoot or the infernal cape is 4% damage reduction. So this is slightly worse, but this I think is better for magic. Like if I was to go and try to equip the, uh, oh, where do I have that? That over here. So if I was to go try to equip this, there is uh, melee and ranged bonuses on here, but I would actually lose a little bit of the magic. I would gain a little bit of damage reduction, but I would gain some of the magic uh, bo bonuses that I get. So for the magic side, I want the skull cape and the elite amulet of magic. It just makes it better. So in here, you can do wizard scrolls. This has rune preservation. If you want to use that, you can also use the, the magic hinder scrolls here. Either one. Uh, magic hinder scrolls give you better accuracy. This just keeps you from burning up runes. Depends on how short you are on runes and how low on accuracy you are. Uh, let's see. There is no gloves, so you can do paladin gloves or like I've done here is the ancient dragon hide van braces and then the silver diamond ring. Now, one thing I will want to note here before we go into the spells, the ancient gear has plus five minimum damage when using air, water, earth, or fire spells, and plus 6% accuracy when using a surge spell. So if you're using an elemental surge spell, you're going to do better. Now, keep in mind, this is a fire imbued wand. If we go over here to the spell book, this is an elemental surge spell. So this takes the benefits of the fire imbued wand with the ancient suit and makes it better. And this is the best spell that I can use in the standard spell book for a curse. I would do anguish three so that the enemy takes a little bit more damage. And then the Aurora, I would take surge two. So you attack a little faster. You get 0.2 second, uh, sped up attack. Now, once you start beating these God dungeons, you're going to have access to ancient magic. That's a whole other ball game. That's more for idling the dungeon. But when you first attack it, you're only going to have access to the standard spell book. So this is your best in slot melee gear up to the God dungeons. And then finally on the range side, this is your best in slot gear on this side here. Uh, Infernal Cape, the Elite Amulet of Ranged. Now you could use the Defense Amulet here, the Elite Amulet of Defense, that's 2% damage reduction. This one's only 1%, but this gives you some ranged boosts, so is what it is. Melee or Ranged Hinder Scrolls, I'm using Emerald Bolts, but you can use a lot better bolts if you've got better fletching. Uh, scaled Shield, this is an upgraded version of the Ancient 
dragon hide shield and then the ancient dragon hide equipment is upgraded uh silver diamond ring ancient crossbow and infernal cape now here i'm using the centaur witch synergy because this gives when you're fighting a magic enemy you get granted some bonuses for your ranged equipment and strength so just some different options there's a ton of different synergies in here for the summoning tablets so find something that looks good, like whether you, it depends on what you're doing and where you're at and how much you need damage reduction. So you'd put a yak on or how much you want to do more damage. You'd put the dragon on or something like that. Uh, there's a mixture you can use. It just depends on where you're at really. Now, why don't I have a helmet or boots? That is because there is no helmet or boots for the ranged class uh, until you get into the God dungeons. Now I know I know you're going to say, well, there's leather gloves and hard leather gloves and hard leather boots. They're terrible. They don't have any damage reduction. So there's no point in wearing them. There is the ranger hat, and the ranger boots. They don't have damage reduction and they're there to preserve resources. So in this case, what I would be looking at doing is probably going over here to these dragon boots and getting a copy of those over here. Now you're not going to get any bonuses for them for ranged, but at least it gets you some damage reduction and helps you get through the dungeons. Now, up for a helmet, what I would do here is probably the Slayer helmet, and I've got it in my notes. i got to find it where it starts at, but once you get into, I am not seeing it. Where am I not seeing it? Must have deleted it out. Um, I can't remember where it's at. It's not the basic helmet. I think it's at least the strong upgrade and then the elite. I think it's where you get strong is where you start getting damage reduction on the Slayer gear. So if you get the Slayer cowl and upgrade it to strong, you get a little bit of damage reduction, like 2% or something. And then if you upgrade it to elite, again, more grind. But if you get that, it's like 4% or something like that. So it gives you some damage reduction for a ranged thing. I know it's a Slayer helmet, but it still works in dungeons for damage reduction and whatever little boost you get. And then boots, like I said, I would come over here to the use the melee boots. You could also use the ancient boots if you get a second set of those, because that you don't have to actually upgrade or anything. You just find it. And if you find it, you can just equip it. Uh, this gives you 5% damage reduction, whereas these give you six. So there is a little bit of loss there, but either one, it depends on how much you want to grind and where you're at with everything. So how do you attack these dungeons? Well, like I said, the first time through, you're going to want to go through the combat triangle and basically the end boss of each one is what you want to idle it with. So once you get through each of these and you've gone past and done whatever you need to do, whether you go on to into the mist and come back or just get through one or two of these, uh, you will come back and start looking to idle these. Now, however you want to get to the idle part, uh, you're going to need a bunch of damage reduction, a lot of food, and some better gear, probably. Now, the better gear comes from the god dungeons. So as you complete each one of these, you're going to get a piece of gear or potentially two pieces of gear if you get a good drop. Now, the first thing you're going to get is probably boots, gloves, or helmet. Those are the most common drops in each one of these dungeons. Um if you manually clear all of these and you have level 85 defense ranged and magic, you'll be able to instantly equip whatever comes out of these dungeons. Just put it on and you're done. So whatever items you get out of here is going to instantly upgrade your character and whatever they have, which is great for ranged because ranged. Remember I said, doesn't have boots or helmet. So if you get boots on the first drop and then helmet on the second one or vice versa or whatever, you're going to, fill out these and you're going to have better damage reduction. And at this stage of the game, damage reduction is king. So the way these dungeons work and they are geared specifically so that they can be attacked with one combat style to gear up a different combat style. So you're going to, once you get through the volcanic cave and if you've got all the gear we just went through, you would attack the air God dungeon with your melee side because melee is strong against ranged. And then you would gear, you know, gear up out of this dungeon, get all your ranged gear, and then take that ranged gear and go into the water god dungeon. And the water god dungeon is all magic, or basically all magic. So you would put your ranged in here to idle this with against the magic stuff. 
So that gears up your magic side. So then you take the magic gear that you have out of here and start idling the Earth God dungeon for your melee gear. So you're getting melee gear out of the volcanic cave that you go into the Air God dungeon with. Gear up your range character to go into here and get the magic gear. Gear up the magic character to come back into the Earth God dungeon or come into the Earth God dungeon and gear up your melee character. So that's how this all works. That's the the linear. It's a linear path. Once you get to this point, you, you have to basically go across and that's it. There's no other choices here. Now, the Fire God dungeon is kind of an outlier. This one, you need to come back into this with your range character. Now, there are some things that are, you could use, you can follow the combat triangle through this, but the end boss is uh, magic. So you want to use the range character. Most of these dungeons are not that difficult. Uh, there's not really anything to worry about. There is some stun, there is some freeze or whatever in here, but those just make sure that you have enough auto eat to eat past that so you don't get killed by it, especially if you're going to let it go in idle. You don't want to have something that you're just borderline surviving and then get stunned and accidentally get killed because you're the stun puts you over it. So uh, take the stuns and all that into account. Now, the Fire God dungeon is a little different, though. This one actually has uh, right before the end, there's this there's a melee creature called Ignis. So once you're ready to start uh, idling this dungeon. Idling means you're going to take the range character and just tell him to go and he's going to run it a hundred times until you check it again or five times or whatever. And he needs to survive all of those clears that you're not watching. You're not manually sitting there to run or change combat styles or manually eat or whatever. When you get to the, the second mini boss, just the mini boss, just before the final boss, he is melee and he hits hard. So you may be able to walk through the rest of this dungeon except for that one creature. And for that one creature, you may have to run damage reduction fours. You may have to run the yak synergy and all that just to clear this dungeon. And that's fine. The rest of it will be a cakewalk and you'll be burning up potions and uh, summoning tablets you don't need. But you need to survive that care, that one creature. And you want to clear this as many times as you can. The other benefit of all these dungeons is once you get over to uh, the Unhallowed Wasteland, each of these things upgrades a glove and ring from those dungeons. So I guess I forgot about there's uh, there's uh, these shards. I don't have any because I've got auto looter on, but there's shards that actually come out of each of these god dungeons. And when you get 100 shards, you get a chest. And when you open that little chest, you get a chance for like, arrows and bolts and stuff out of the god dungeon air god dungeon the water god gives you like runes and stuff like that earth god gives you um ores i think uh fire god i think gives gems but they all give you a chance to get an amulet and a ring out of these and if you get 10 of the rings something like that 10 rings and I don't remember. There's you have to have enough of the gauntlets that come from each of these and enough of the rings. And then once you start working on Unhallowed Wasteland, you get upgrade components for those. But that's a whole other thing for another day. So now we're getting on close to being a very long video. It's already a very long video. To wrap this up, that explanation of how all this works hopefully helps and hopefully gets you the first clear on all of these if you haven't already cleared them yet. When you come back to idle each of these, what I'm going to leave you with is that you would want to equip all of the gear that's on here. So let's say I go in here and switch over to my melee build. Uh, I would definitely want to start equipping all of the melee gear as I get it, and I don't see it. So maybe I need to sort my items and here we go so we start equipping all of this and that would be what my melee build looks like to go into the mist so you want all of this god gear before you go on further down the road and you would want all of this to actually idle these god dungeons because this goes i don't remember where i was at with damage reduction but now i'm at 59 percent. this one's at 43 percent. if i go and equip all the glacier gear uh, what did I say was that? 43, 43%. Go in here and start equipping all this stuff here. 
and we've now moved up to 57. So you're going to get a pretty good boost out of this damage reduction. Now this one here, this, the ranged build is going to completely transform because he's going to have helmet and boots or yeah, helmet and boots. Uh, and you notice you also get gloves for each of these. So you're going to fully gear up everybody out of this. Now, um, one thing I almost forgot about, if you have access to the throne of the Herald expansion, you can get in here to crafting and there are some really good rings and some really good necklaces, uh, on your first time through like this Iridium Zephite necklace, this gives 4% damage reduction to fighting the dungeon boss. So if you're just clearing this for the first time and you have access to this, you could throw that on any of these and instantly gain an additional 2% damage reduction against the boss. Now, if you left this on for the entire dungeon, you would lose 2% for all the other creatures and get 4% for the boss. So this would be like a manual clear type, type thing. Uh, if you've gone through into the mist and beaten that and have your passive slot, then you can equip that into the passive slot and use it there and let it go idle there. But just to quickly point these out, um, let me find these really quickly here. The Palladium Onyx Ring, this is 4% damage reduction when fighting a ranged enemy. So you would put this on your melee character and put that on there. That gives you an additional 4% damage instead of the Silver Diamond Ring. Now, this is only for ranged enemies, so you wouldn't get that buff on all the other stuff, but you would get it for ranged. Uh, then we've got Palladium Aricha, which is the same thing for magic. And then Palladium Runestone gives you the same thing for melee. So these give you a little bit of a buff or a little bit of a damage reduction buff against other stuff. Um, for amulets or necklaces, whatever you want to call them, the same thing. What is it? The Palladium one here? No. Uh, this one. Iridium Onyx. We'll start with the Iridium Onyx. This one gives you 5% max hit, and that is tripled versus a range. So if you, I would not equip this in lieu of the Elite Amulet of Defense, but on your melee character, if you equip this into your passive slot, now this is after you've beaten all the God Dungeons and beaten Into the Mist, you would come back, put this in your passive slot. This gives you a triple value. You're going to get 5% melee max hit for everything, but when you come up against a ranged enemy, it's going to triple. And there's one of these, this Iridium Aricha. That's the same thing for uh, ranged versus magic. And then do, 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 Palladium Runestone. This one, Iridium Runestone. 5% uh, max hit, value tripled versus a melee. So this would be for the magic side. So if you go through and get into the mist done, get your passive slot and have all this stuff equipped, then you could start equipping those uh, amulets that I just showed there and bump up the amount of damage you do. So you're going to have a bunch of dam a bunch of extra damage reduction. Like this is 59% here for melee 57 for magic and 57 for ranged. You could then go and throw those, uh, rings on for a little bit more damage reduction against the main creatures. You'd be fighting your, your weak, um, combat triangle monster. And then you could equip the strong against the combat triangle monster. So, there's a lot of good options down there in the crafting section if you've got the Throne of the Herald expansion. So that will do it for this video. I know it's gone very long, so hopefully this has been helpful and this has been a long time coming. Uh, I should have done this video quite a while ago because we've been these dungeons have been there forever, but there are new people coming on, so I figured it'd be good to go ahead and just make one happen. Anyway, that will do it for this video. We will catch you on the next one. Take care.